Hi, everyone. This is E. David Crawford. Over the past several years, we've had a lot of interest in cardiovascular events associated with androgen deprivation therapy, particularly with FSH. Joining me is an international researcher in the area, Dr. Dan Kelly, who is with the University of Sheffield in the UK. He is going to share with us some of his work with cardiovascular disease with uh, low testosterone and related androgen deprivation therapy. Dan, thanks for uh, sharing this with our audience today. Clinical studies that have investigated testosterone effects on atherosclerosis, usually in carotid or coronary vessels, are limited by assessing surrogate markers and tell us little about the disease process. These studies have often demonstrated contradictory results with several showing negative, a negative correlation between serum testosterone and carotid intermediate thickness. The Bazaria study finding no effective testosterone treatment over three years in the TEAMS trial and more recently an increase in non-calcified plaque volume in coronary arteries of low testosterone men receiving um, 12 months of testosterone therapy. Experimental models of atherosclerosis are a bit more convincing, with almost all studies showing similar results to our recent investigation, whereby the lack of testosterone signaling, whether this is through orchidectomy or androgen receptor knockout, produces significantly increased plaque formation, as we can see in the middle panel here demonstrated by oil red O staining, uh, which stains lipids. Testosterone replacement ameliorates this effect. But how does testosterone influence the cellular pathogenesis of atherosclerosis? Let's move into the plaque now where I've highlighted five key processes in which I will now consider testosterone actions. Monocyte activation results in a more reactive cell phenotype characterized by enhanced pro-inflammatory cytokine secretion as well as having increased migratory and adhesive potential. The increased production of pro-inflammatory pro cytokines can then activate other circulating cells or, vascular, or the vascular endothelium to ultimately promote monocyte adhesion and entry into the artery wall. Despite the limitations of assessing isolated cells or even cancerous cell lines, testosterone has been shown to mostly reduce important pro-inflammatory cytokines, including TNF-alpha, IL-6, IL-1-beta, and reactive oxygen species as an inflammatory stimulus. And this was found in various monocyte cell types and with or without prior inflammatory stimulation. We have demonstrated a reduction in the potent atherogenic cytokine TNF-alpha in isolated monocytes from hypogonadal type 2 diabetic men following six months of testosterone therapy. Uh, and this was in the randomized double-blind crossover STRIDE study. This effect was shown compared to placebo and baseline in the treated patients. Endothelial activation through the upregulation of cytokines and adhesion molecules is the next important step in the entry of monocytes into the arterial wall as early stages of atherosclerosis. Testosterone treatment of human endothelial cells reduces inflammatory cytokine release and decreases the primary chemokine that promotes monocyte migration, CCL2 or monocyte chemoattractant protein 1, MCP1. In the APOE knockout mouse model of accelerated atherosclerosis, we show a reduction in adhesion molecules ICAM1 and VCAM1, but not E-selectin in the aortic route of testosterone-treated orchidectomized animals, as indicated by the green and red staining in these panels here, and the accompanying uh, quantitative image analysis. ICAM and VCAM are considered key molecules in the firm adhesion of monocytes to the endothelium at areas of inflammation. So by reducing, by potentially reducing these two adhesion molecules, we might reduce monocyte infiltration. 
In contrast to our mouse study and other investigations from uh, other groups which demonstrate reduced adhesion molecule expression by testosterone, McCrowan showed that monocytes isolated from healthy volunteers were more likely to adhere to activated endothelial cells in culture following treatment with DHT. This then suggests that androgens might actually promote adhesion and immune cell infiltration into the vasculature. And you can see in these uh, uh, phase contrast images here at the top, the brighter monocytes adhere into the endothelial surface. Potentially supporting androgen enhancement of monocyte adhesion is the finding that testosterone increases CCR2, the corresponding chemokine receptor to MCP1, and also increases monocyte migration towards endothelial derived signaling factors. So taking these two processes together, testosterone may influence testosterone and endothelial function in the context of atherosclerosis by enhancing migration and adhesion, but reducing pro-inflammatory activation. And this might be consistent with the idea that early or anti-inflammatory monocyte infiltration may be a feature of vascular repair and lipid removal, and therefore might actually be a beneficial effect on early plaque progression. Upon entry into the arterial wall, monocytes differentiate into macrophages. And much like with what we saw with monocyte activation, the relatively few studies investigating testosterone effects on macrophage cytokines and inflammatory mediators they mostly show anti-inflammatory effects on some of the key players in this atherosclerotic process. An increased number of studies have actually focused on assessing the influence of testosterone on the way macrophages process vascular lipids, and in particular the formation of lipid-laden foam cells as a central feature of atherogenesis. Overexpression of LOX1, uh, which stands for oxidized uh, low density lipoprotein receptor. So overexpression of this molecule is associated with foam cell formation and the enhancement of a pro-inflammatory phenotype in macrophages. Here we can see in New Zealand white rabbits that castration increased LOX1 and macrophage number, which is indicated by the macrophage marker RAM1 in the second set of panels there. Um, an effect that was ablated by DHT treatment. In the same study, foam cell formation in isolated macrophages from mice was also reduced by DHT and corresponded to um, a reduction in LOX1 expression, at least in the nanomolar treatment range. We have recently shown that testosterone promoted clearance of fluorescently labelled cholesterol from lipid-laden human macrophage cell line. Over time, we can see that cholesterol is pushed to the cell membrane and released in testosterone-treated cells compared to controls. This is significant from six hours, but more pronounced at 24. We look at the bar chart there at the bottom we can see that androgen receptor blockade prevented this effect as did antagonism of liver x receptor alpha or lxr alpha which is a known master regulator of lipid metabolism in fact um, we saw lxr alpha expression was increased by testosterone treatment as were LXR targets, APOE and ABCA1, which are both central and involved in the process of cholesterol efflux. We saw this at the gene and protein expression. In fact, we saw that ABCA1, which functions as a cholesterol exporter, was also increasingly localized to the cell membrane as, a as opposed to perinuclear regions to potentially assist cellular cholesterol clearance. Similarly, both estrified and non-estrified cholesterol was seen to be reduced following testosterone treatment of human monocyte derived macrophages isolated from healthy volunteers, which were converted to foam cells prior to this androgen treatment. 
This reduction in cholesterol was due to an efflux to HDL3, high density lipoprotein 3, and was thought to be due to increased expression of scavenger receptor 1B, which acts as a HDL receptor to allow cholesterol transfer across the cell membrane, rather than an effect on ABCA1 like we had shown. Interestingly, testosterone can also increase apoptosis in THP1 monocytes and human monocyte-derived macrophages. Um, cell death within an atherosclerotic lesion is often considered a negative effect, and this may well be true in advanced lesions where macrophage apoptosis promotes the development of a necrotic core, rendering the plaque more vulnerable to rupture. But an interesting dichotomy exists where macrophage apoptosis in early lesions can reduce cellularity, um, it can prevent foam cell formation, and prevent overall plaque progression. Therefore, interpreting results, um, therefore, interpreting testosterone effects in this context will depend upon the stage of atherodevelopment that we are looking at. So far, we have just considered macrophages per se, but macrophage subtype plays an important role in atherogenesis, and this can also be influenced by testosterone which has been shown to promote um, M2 subsets and inhibit M1 polarization. Broadly speaking, the original M0 macrophage that entered the arterial wall originally as a monocyte and then underwent transformation into an initial M0 macrophage subtype, this macrophage can differentiate into either M1 or M2 subsets. M2 macrophages are considered atheroprotect atheroprotective, predominating in the early stages of atherosclerosis and can reduce plaque development. They're characterized by anti-inflammatory cytokine IL-10 secretion and they are known to accumulate smaller quantities of lipid, processing it for reverse cholesterol transport. M1 macrophages, on the other hand, are found in advanced lesions where they accumulate larger quantities of lipids um, and have a tendency to differentiate into foam cells and secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines TNF-alpha and IL-6 and also the matrix degrading metalloproteinases known as MMPs. These exacerbate and destabilize the lesion by breaking down um, extracellular matrix components. So by potentially inhibiting M1 and promoting M2 macrophage subsets, testosterone may positively influence lesion development and in particular plaque composition. When it comes to plaque composition, we saw in our APOE knockout mice that orchidectomized mice had fewer strength-giving smooth muscles throughout the plaque compared to sham-operated and testosterone-treated mice, as indicated by the red staining um, here. Uh, so it appears more dispersed throughout the lesions of our testosterone-replete animals, as we can see. In fact, in orchidectomized mice, where we have this lack of smooth muscle cells in the lesion, there is an accompanying increase in monocytes and lipid indicated by the green staining for the uh, the pan macrophage marker MOMA2 and the oil red o lipid staining in the panel below. This accompanying increase in monocytes and lipids um, is indicative of a more mature plaque. So there appears to be testosterone induced differences in the composition of atherosclerotic lesions Although in line with some of those earlier clinical studies we looked at, we actually saw no difference in the total plaque area or the plaque volume in these mice across the different treatment groups. Um, matrix metalloproteinase 13 or MMP13, which degrades plaque collagen, appeared to be slightly increased in low testosterone mice, but this was then not reflected in the assessment of um, lesion collagen content by the blue in the Mason's trichrome 
histology staining uh, in the panels at the bottom there. It's also worth noting here that testosterone has been shown to inhibit MMP1, which has fibrolytic activity, although this was shown in a different cell type in a different model system. So by potentially inhibiting MMPs, testosterone may preserve plaque structure and reduce vulnerability of that plaque to rupture. Pulling some of these ideas together now then um, to consider testosterone's influence on atherogenesis, I feel that we need to always bear in mind that atherosclerosis is a chronic disease where the pathogenesis changes over time and different characteristics of the lesion and its cellular constituents can have different functions at different stages within the disease which then influences its progression towards the ultimate endpoints of either rupture or regression. Clinically and experimentally, we tend to investigate atherosclerotic plaques in these stages. So challenging some of our existing beliefs when interpreting results is, uh, in my opinion, worthwhile. So for example, Increased plaque volume may actually be beneficial if that plaque volume is a result of remodeling to provide structure in later stages, or if that increased volume is made up of primarily anti-inflammatory immune cells. Increased macrophage apoptosis can be beneficial in specific situations to reduce inflammatory cellularity, prevent foam cell formation, and prevent plaque progression. Increased inflammation can be a good thing if it is controlled by a balance with anti-inflammatory regulators. After all, the immune cells are needed to repair damage and to clear lipids. And potentially a decrease in collagen and fibrous tissue may be required in certain areas and stages of the disease to allow cellular infiltration and smooth muscle cell migration throughout the plaque in that remodeling process. Again, there needs to be a balance between matrix building and, matri and matrix degradation in this context. So within this often contradictory and sometimes confusing data across a complex chronic and changing disease, I am suggesting a role for testosterone in the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis that might help explain the benefits seen for cardiovascular disease in patients. But evidence to support its specific effects on these key processes of atherosclerosis may well be context bound and dependent upon um, a few different things like the particular stage of the disease, the vascular bed that's investigated, the location or the specific area within the plaque that we are looking at, and in particular, the model used and the differences between these models. 